So hi everyone. So from the title and from my hairdo, you'll probably know what this video is about. Mex uh, Mexican Mennonites immigrated to Mexico on March 8th of 1922. So they celebrated their 100th anniversary just now. So yeah, I figured it was appropriate I do a video about it because I do have a heritage in traditional Mennonite, uh, being a traditional Mennonite. I was born into it. My parents were born into it. I was... Um, I was almost nine years old when my parents left. Um, my mom was born actually in Mexico in 1961, so she was born quite a bit after they immigrated, but um, so they moved, my parents moved to Belize, where there's also a traditional Mennonite um, community. And so, yeah. I grew up until I was nine years old. I have visited a traditional Mennonite school. I was already, I was in the, for those that don't know, there's the grading is, there's a feeble, there is catechismus, uh, there, then there is a testament, and then there's feeble, and once you finish with feeble, then you're through the school. So I had just reached testament. And usually most people, like girls, they were usually done at about, about 11 and boys at about 12. And what I later learned, I didn't know this, but I was also pretty innocent back then. What I later learned is one reason why girls usually traditionally only went to school at till 11 was one one thing they is that um, what they told us kids was, oh, girls learn faster than boys. They mature faster, <laughs> okay? Uh, one thing is, it was about the maturing. I just didn't know what they meant about the maturing part. Menstruation. It is embarrassing for a girl to go to school and have a menstruation. In traditional Mennonite schools, you will not, the, the girls there, they do not, still not menstruate. So they don't want to have periods. If they have periods, well, she's done with school. And sometimes also before, they take them out at about 11 because just in case they will suck a period or whatever. And um, once they know how to read, you're done. At about 11. Like, of course, you know how to read a long time before that, but once you're all that done, you're done with your math stuff. They have certain things of, from like math cards that we used to have to fill out and stuff. So, yeah. And then they go home to help their moms in the household. And I have a bunch of stories from going to school there. So, if you want me to tell stories, just so tell say so in the comments below today i'm gonna put on a traditional mennonite dress one that my mom actually sewed to me my family still visited the community uh, years later because most of our family was there and uh, she wanted us to fit in so she still sometimes made us a dress and stuff like that this one is um just over 10 years ago my mom made this dress for me so let's see how it fits i haven't worn it since 10 years ago was the last time I wore it. So let's see how, how it's gonna go. And my sister-in-law, she lived in Bolivia and she also used to be from a traditional Mennonite community. So she helped me with my hair as uh, I have never done my hair like this, like um, myself. And so she helped me with that because she was already older when they moved away. So she knew more about that part. And we just used to have to do one braid. Like that was all that my mom required, one braid in the back. And here, if you can see um, under this, all of this, like there is a lot more going on. The ladies in the community, they would put stuff, but under, hide the hair, of course. And I, I'm wearing this tight outfit because, well, I'm gonna show you how it looks and I don't wanna, and how to put it on. And this is still, it was stylish back then for the traditional community, it's still stylish. You never go out of style there. That's, I'm guessing, a bonus point. And you can see, ah, yeah, here's butts as well.
you a little bit later how that is done. Okay, that probably go about that business. And then this goes up here. So for now it looks like this here. And then there comes this is called a Schlittfold. Look at all the details. Look, uh, different uh, communities have different uh, styles of how they do this. Some would sew across here as well, kind of like in a pattern. It wasn't very visible, but still they would sew there so that it was like, I don't know, some considered it a, a sin to sew there. It was already too prideful, too proud. So you weren't supposed to do that. So there we go on that area. Um, oh, yes, sorry, I got this done too quick. I should not have gone that one. What they would do is there, adjust that. Oh, I did not press this. Grant, I have been putting this away. It's in, been in storage for like 10 years, so. Um, I think it's still looking pretty good-ish for their stuff, um, considering it's been in storage for so long. So this is how it looks, and you know, you can put your hand all the way through there. So if they wanted to nurse their babies for the uh, ladies, then they would go like this. Uh, the, the, I have little pins here. That's what most everybody would do. They would make little pins and fasten it. I won't do it right now. They would just like take out a pin or something. There, open up these buttons and ta-da, they had a nursing place. And of course, just like that, you close it back up. And readjust things here. One of my kiddos is going to come in here, I think. I asked him to stay in the other room while I, so I can film this better. So how this looks is like this. And sometimes the younger women would use the same fabric to make a uh, shawl uh, like an apron to go there. Huh? Do you like it? You like it? Oh, wow. <laughs> Kendra likes it. Gets her vote approved. And the older ladies would very often uh, put a black one, and um, the younger girls would have these aprons that were over here, and then they had also like this place that goes behind the back and everything, and it gets tied in the back. Hey, Kendra, mommy wants to show everybody the back of this dress, okay? Can you hold on a sec? Like if you can see it, it that's how it looks. Like the folds, they go spring right back into it. Look, like, that looks weird. It always looks weird. You gotta admit that. Like when the ladies bend down, and my mom made this dress longer already than what was traditional. Traditional was more like like that, like just a little bit below the knee. So my mom made longer. But imagine that. And now imagine the lady bending down. That's weird. You gotta admit that. That's funny and hilarious. Well, Anyway, in conclusion, I'm very happy that the Mennonites came all these ways and they have been very blessed. God has protected them in many ways. And um, I know that I'm very fortunate with the heritage that I have. And, but the thing is, the truth in the end is, I'm still happy that I am not traditional Mennonite anymore. <laughs> I wouldn't want to go back to it. I would want to visit again, but I would not try to fit in as badly. I would. I know that my aunts and uncles they would accept me because I was never. Uh, I've never even entered a Mennonite, a traditional Mennonite church, because you had to be like uh, 14, 15 or so. Then you could go to church. Then you were big enough to church, go to church. Um, there were the children were left at home, and if you had a small baby, they would you got to go with. Hey, hold on, Kendra. Do you want to go watch your movie? Your Winnie the Pooh? 
Hey, don't do, don't do that. Don't do that. Please. Um, see, that's why I asked them to watch the movie. And I'll quickly put her away. to go to church yet, they would very often, if the child was like um, a year old or so, they would leave it at home and have somebody come and babysit, or if some of their own kids were big enough to uh, babysit their younger kids, they would do that. And one thing is, uh, some might say it's not safe, and somehow it was always safe, because kids weren't kidnapped there. Kids weren't uh, abducted, abused. Well, I won't say abused because there's a lot of different places, a lot of different stories. Because I have heard stories from places where I'm absolutely disgusted that I'm a traditional Mennonite. And I'm like, okay, they have the Bible. They know what is right, what is wrong. And they still don't do it. And they still are mean to each other. So I don't agree with that. That is absolutely not right. And... Um, but yeah, so those bigger kids would, would babysit, and the parents weren't that far away, because every dark, every um, street would have basically have their own church, or like there would be two or three streets joined together, there would be, there was multiple churches, so the parents weren't that far away. If there was an emergency, you could get the parents pretty quick. And uh, they didn't have any phones, we didn't have any electricity, um, we used propane lamps <laughs> in Belize because uh, that's where I originally, my first years grew up. Um, you go bathroom. What do you think of mommy's dress, Rachel? What do you think of mommy's dress? It looks pretty, not weird. What about you, Rosie? What do you think of mommy's dress? Yeah, if you want more detailed stories about my growing up years, or like my years in Belize as a traditional Mennonite, I'm happy to share, just comment. I'd be happy to share more. And yes, but I am, you're in front of the camera, sweetie. I am very happy that my parents moved away. My parents moved away due to a lot of reasons that I didn't really understand as a child. And yeah, so we moved to Mexico. I got to go to a different school that I'm very thankful for. I don't send my kids to school now, but I'm very thankful I got to go because now I have the ability to homeschool my kids. And their kid, they will be able to homeschool their kids if they choose to, and so on. It's like you, you broke the, the not knowing cycle, and now I can do all of that. I'm very thankful that I got to go to a different church and although I don't speak about it often, I am a Christian. I, uh, we do go to a church on a regular basis. We do help out around the church. And yeah, I'm very happy we get to do all of that. But I'm also happy that I'm not restricted to being a lawful. Well, that I am, if that my salvation isn't grounded in rules that Jesus is my salvation, that I get to know that I'm saved by faith and grace and not by what I am able to do. And that I can know that I am saved, that I don't have to, like the Mennonite, traditional Mennonite, at least the way, what, ones I grew up around in, they said, well, you can't know if you're saved. When you die, you're going to find out if you were good enough or if you were not good enough, if you're going to be saved or if you're going to be not saved. And that was how that went. And that is, that is a sad way of life. That's sad. 
And then there was also a lot of people who weren't really good, but, well, they were considered Christians, and you, everybody saw what they did was wrong. And there's a whole, whole enchilada, so. But, yeah, so the Mennonites came here, they started working here, and that's been 100 years. So we'll see what comes next, what happens in the next 100 years. When my parents moved to Chihuahua, Chihuahua, we ha there was basically this one restaurant that's the only restaurant I remember, and it's closed down now because there have been bigger restaurants, more restaurants popped up. And that one, I don't know if they didn't uh, modernize or grow quickly enough for the demand or whatever. So anyway, they closed. and Or maybe their building just wasn't big enough. I don't know. Uh, anyway, that restaurant, that particular restaurant closed down when my parents moved here. I have lived in Mexico now, in Chihuahua State, for um, since February. It is, let's see, 10, 11. In 2006, my parents moved here, in February 2006. And now we're 2021. I think 16 years, that is, right? <laughs> Anyway, so I've lived the majority of my life here. I am about to turn 25. Uh, I was about, uh, shortly before I turned nine, my parents moved here, so now I'm about to 25. Uh, you do the math. <laughs> and um, yeah, so I grew up around here, met my husband here, got married, had so far four beautiful children, and very happy with what I got, with where I am, and everything. And the traditional Mennonite community around here, I know I am jumping from one point to another, but <laughs> I hope you still are listening to this part to, till the end, you have gotten through all of that jumpiness. Um, the traditional Mennonites around here, they are already very different from when they used to be. They have gotten the traditional Mennonites around this area that I live, there are areas that do dress like this still. But the area where I live, they have moved on to a different dress code. They still have a dress code, um, but they have a different one. They do use trucks, they do use electricity, they do use phones, they do use computers, electri uh, yeah, electricity already said, uh, they do use vehicles and all that, but where I came from those people are still very much no electricity, no phones, um, no uh, vehicles. Well, the people can own a vehicle, but they can't drive it. That's the thing. You have to hire a driver from outside the community and also not have a public knowledge that it's your vehicle. Supposedly, it's that, you know, the driver's vehicle. And. Yeah, and if you need a phone for medical stuff, you have to, there is this one little place where most of the drivers hang out, so you go there, use one of their phones to call for medical assistance, to go there to have them drive you to the hospital or stuff like that, wherever you need. And I have had nieces and nephews that might be alive if they had gotten medical attention early enough, who knows, but... And that was even, that was years ago. That was before I was born. So the thing is, it's not even sure back then. But phones existed and they didn't have those in the community because they didn't believe in them. And that's, for me, is sad that that, is, that happened. So yeah. Anyway, in conclusion, here we are, Mennonites in Mexico, 100 years. A lot, a lot of years and yet not even that many. And happy to be here where I am today. Dankeschön für alle, die zuhören und watching. Und ich hoffe, ihr habt euch nicht in den Stich direkt gekriegt, die ähm, direkt englische Videos mehr in der Welt. Und wenn ihr wollt, mich weiter in den Kommentaren, schreibt ihr noch mal an. Oder wenn ihr mir ein WhatsApp habt, schreibt ihr mir eine Message. Und wenn ihr noch mal was was wollt, ihr habt ihr noch So, ja. Yeah. Um, ich glaube, die meisten von uns kennen wir in Englisch verstehen, wenn wir auf dem meisten Deutsch reden da im Haus. Wie ich persönlich da im Haus auf meisten Englisch rede, für mich jetzt vielleicht auch Englisch reden als Deutsch, als Plotdeutsch. Und 
yeah, ek hoop jy hard nu en weer aan mijn video's. En wanneer dan leer jy vlieg Engels, want jy nie Engels al chan. Watch my videos te ween, en vlieg jy jy. Um, bet my aan te verstoen, bet my aan te reden. Proof dat. So, wat jy dalle hier reden, want jy veel aan my aan. Proof dat Engels te reden, maar wat jy kon leer. So, ja, weet jy wel. Dat is ook oké. Okay. Yep, bye, see ya. Um, see you next week in a video.